Hello and welcome back to the channel or if you're new here my name is James and on this channel I talk about everything to do with research. So today what I thought I would talk about are the sometimes unconventional habits or unconventional ideas people have that help them to do great research and perhaps some of these ideas will be important for you. So let's get into it. We sometimes think that what we are trying to do is to come to an answer. However, what I'm going to suggest is that what you really, really want to do is to prioritize the questions that, that you ask. What is the quality of the question that you ask? Because whatever about trying to rush for answers, that's probably never a great idea. But those answers will only really be as impactful, as interesting as the question that was asked in the first place. And quite often, people will come up with a question, something to be answered, and immediately go forward without taking the time to prioritize looking at that question and trying to figure out whether that question really has the kind of merits that would occupy your time and that deserve your time. So prioritize questions over answers. Embracing failure is an important thing to do. Not everybody likes it, but if that experiment goes wrong, or if some data that you've analyzed didn't come back with the result that you wanted, well, you can consider that to be a failure, or you can take this as an opportunity to learn something from that. Why did it fail? What can I learn about it? Rather than sort of avoiding failure, rather than taking that failure and not really looking at it and examining it, embracing failure can be one of those unconventional habits that really help you out and help you to understand what you're doing. Embracing interdisciplinary thinking is very, very important. We can spend a lot of our time doing the thing that we know how to do, going down that rabbit hole, understanding whatever it is that we need to understand. And we never really take the time to think about other disciplines and what they might have to offer, what you might learn there, etc. Quite often when we think about interdisciplinary work, we collaborate with somebody else who's going to do the other part of the interdisciplinary work. Embracing interdisciplinary thinking is entirely different. It says that you might try to figure out what you know, this branch of engineering or that branch of physics or history or politics or wherever the research is going on, the way in which they approach problems, the way in which they think about it, that can be of huge benefit to you. So embracing interdisciplinary thinking can be a very, very productive route. You know how we never like criticism? We really don't. It sort of annoys us when somebody comes along and says, do you know something? You weren't very good at that thing that perhaps you yourself thought you were good at. You can't run from that. You can't avoid it. And not just that, but it can be a kind of superpower for you if you embrace the criticism that other people have. Ask for it. Somebody said to me one time that when you give a talk, you sit down after the talk and all your friends are there and they, they say, oh, well done, well done, well done. That was really, really great. That was really, really great. Leave it an hour. Then come up to them and say, can you tell me three things that I should have done better? And then they come along and they say, oh, yeah, your second slide, well, you could have done that better or this and this and this. So embracing criticism, looking for it, that's a really positive mindset to have. And I know none of us particularly like when we get criticism, but I think embracing it is a better way to do things. For many, many years, I've thought that what really distinguished great researchers was their ability to start with a very, very vague idea, a lot of uncertainty. And rather than sort of say, oh, I don't like this uncertainty, I want certainty, that those researchers work with it. They try to mold that uncertainty to see what idea comes out from within it. And if they're able to do that, then quite often they will find unusual connections. They will find some idea within that uncertainty that leads them on to formulate a really great question and then hopefully down the line to formulate a great answer. But if we start with certainty, then really is it research? Is it that really what we're doing? Embracing the uncertainty, the amorphousness of an idea that's somewhere beyond your grasp for now, 
but working with that and teasing away at it can be a very, very good way to finding really great research questions and really great insights. I know that we live in a world where competition for resources, for grant funding, for studentships and students and postdoctoral fellowships and so on, that that creates a kind of atmosphere where we naturally begin to think that competition is the status quo, that competition is the way to do things. But it's not. It really isn't. If you want to get somewhere faster, if you want to do something more insightful, then the most common way to do that is by collaborating with people who have a slightly or maybe a very different skill set to you, have different knowledge and so on. Competing all the time really is exhausting, it's probably counterproductive and it's more likely to result in slower progress than if you go out and tell people, hey, I want to collaborate and you persist with this collaboration mindset, I guarantee you it's going to be faster, better, than if you were competing and being competitive all the time. This is an old chestnut, of course. Keep it simple, stupid. Research tends to get very complicated and complex. And quite often you'll meet researchers that love to tell you about how complicated their work is and how really you might not understand it because it's so complicated. And this might lead you to think, well, I've got to do complicated stuff. No, keep it simple. Simplicity is easy to understand. Simplicity is easy to explain. If you've got a really good idea, then you should be able to formulate that idea in 12 words or fewer and tell people about it in that way. If you feel you can't, then maybe you haven't gotten to the heart of the problem or the question that you're trying to answer. So keep it simple. It will get complicated enough on its own. And that simplicity really can be the thing that helps you understand what you're doing. Questioning established norms can sort of take two different forms. One form is not terribly good. These are the quacks and these are the, 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 the conspiracy theorists and so on who sort of you know, won't believe that gravity exists if you tell them. That's not what we're talking about. Intelligent, informed questioning of established norms is a very, very positive thing to do. If the established norms stand up to scrutiny, then that's fine, but there may be gaps in knowledge. More often than not, as time goes on, as technology improves or as data improves and so on, those established norms can sometimes fall down in the light of new data. So it's an important thing to do to question everything. Rather famously, Bill Gates has said that for one week every year, he goes on a personal retreat. He has quiet time. Time to reflect, time to read, time to generate new ideas, time to figure out if he's going in the right direction. And this is a very, very positive thing for all of us to do. To take some time, perhaps you can't carve out a full week, but maybe one, two, three times a year to carve out a specific time that's quiet time, that's retreat time, that's where you switch off your phone, where you switch off the internet, and really get to the core of what it is that you want to do. You really need to emphasize the process over any kind of outcome. Or to put it another way, just become really, really good at what you do. Really understand it. Work hard at understanding the process of research in your particular area. Make sure you know the literature. Make sure you know all the methods of research. Make sure you understand what you're doing all of the time. And really great outcomes come from really great understanding. History is full of people who accidentally stumbled across something, but they knew what it was when they saw it. Quite often, outrageously brilliant outcomes are a kind of epiphenomenon of just being really, really good and emphasizing the process of research so that in the end, you end up with a great outcome. But trying to say, I want a great outcome, I'm going to do that without spending the time to be great at the process, without spending the time to be an excellent researcher and just trying to get to the end point, that's probably a much more difficult thing to get right. And history tells us that great research outcomes have come from people who themselves were great researchers and really understood the process. I hope you've enjoyed 
this video. I hope it's been useful for you. If so, perhaps you could give this video a thumbs up and maybe you could subscribe to this channel because it would really help me to make more of these videos. Thank you.